Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. So on this cold and actually snowy day here in Texas, we're gonna compare the two phones that I have here, the Note 10 Plus 5G and the Note 20 Ultra 5G. This guy, the Note 10, I've had since March, so I'm pretty well familiar with it. This one I've only had since December 24th, so I pretty much learned it all uh, the two phones are the main flagships of Samsung, this one being released in August of 2019, and this one here released uh, just in, I believe, August of this year. So the first thing I notice about these two is the build quality is completely different. And so I'll get to that a little bit more in detail. Uh, it's kind of dangerous to hold these two guys without the case, but I thought I'd want to show everybody basically the difference between them. We kind of went through this on the last video, but you can see this one here is a glass back, but it's a matted finish. It's not that easy to catch fingerprints. This one here is a fingerprint magnet. It's a beautiful Aurora glow as they call it, but it's a shiny back, uh, very easy to catch fingerprints. Both of them I have cases for. Uh, so let's just get to the build quality. I'm going to cut this for a minute and I'll be right back. So guys, here are the two devices uh, side by side. We have the Note 20 Ultra 5G on the left. We have the Note 10 Plus 5G on the right. Uh, the build looks about the same as far as how they styled it. Looks like this guy wanted to go to sleep. Uh, Note 20 Ultra on the left seems to be a little taller uh, and not as wide. The Note 10 on the right, a uh, little wider, a little shorter. And when I'm holding them, the Note 20 is definitely a little bit heavier. Uh, and I'm just more used to holding that Note 10 for so long. But, you know, as far as the build quality as they are on the front, they're just absolutely, to me, they're almost the same, you know, other than the color. The Note 20 Ultra has the Invictus uh, Gorilla Glass 7 glass, and on the right, the Note 10 Plus has the Gorilla Glass 6. So, really no opinion there. You know, I'm not going to test how strong the screens are. I'm hearing the Gorilla Glass 7 is much uh, superior and it survives the drop test a lot better. So if you look at these guys from the back here, you could tell now there are some clear differences. The Note 20 Ultra on the left side has that uh, really beautiful matted uh, glass, uh, very hard to catch fingerprints. This guy over here, you can already see some fingerprints. And I can see this uh, shiny back here is wreaking havoc with the autofocus on the camera. You can literally see uh, almost like a mosaic reflection they call this aurora glow so it's kind of like a mirror but kind of gives it a uh, glowing effect so almost like a holographic effect so in the back uh, i prefer the note 20 ultra because much harder to uh, have fingerprints on it this other one here you could literally use it as a, a mirror to signal overhead aircraft <laughs> uh, the next thing is the camera bump you can see very pronounced camera bump on the note 20 ultra this kind of phone like i said in the last video you cannot use this without a case if you put this thing on the flat surface you could damage the camera and the phone a lot lay flat that's pretty much the same with the note 10 here uh, the two phones uh, are beautiful but i say the note 10 has an advantage not having such a large camera bump on there but as we all know at least most of us do the note 20 ultra has a much superior camera so in a second here, I'm gonna describe the functions of each of these cameras. 
Okay, guys, getting back to the review here, or comparison. Uh, you can see it's wreaking havoc with the autofocus again, but that's fine. So on the Note 20 Ultra on the left, the lenses are as follows. The one here at the very top is a 12 megapixel uh, ultra wide. The one here in the middle is a 108 megapixel wide angle. That is the, one of the main selling points of this phone. And then down here at the bottom is the 12 megapixel telephoto. The one lens that's a little hard to see here has kind of a red dot and then a regular camera under it. That is the laser autofocus. That one will very quickly determine the distance of the subject you're taking a picture from and quickly adjust the autofocus. I've seen that camera in action. It is very good, at least that feature in that action. And up here, of course, is the flash. And you can see that the sensors are a lot bigger, the, the lenses themselves on the Note 20 Ultra, thus allowing a lot more light and a greater pixel density to make that 108 megapixel uh, possible. Now over here, the Note uh, 10 Plus on the right, much smaller lenses. You could, the one at the very top is the 16 megapixel ultra wide. The one in the middle is the 12 uh, megapixel uh, wide angle. And the one at the bottom is a telephoto. So similar functions for each one of them as this phone over here. This unusual two lens arrangement here is considered a depth finding camera or time of flight camera. Uh, you notice they kind of removed that from this one, but this camera allowed for some of the special features of this phone. There was like a 3D imager, and I believe another app in there that would uh, measure the actual width of an item and give you its measurements. I believe that that camera arrangement allowed those functions to exist. At the top, there's the flash. So the camera bump on the Note 20 Ultra is very extreme. Thus, it's just kind of, you know, the phone's still beautiful, but it is kind of an oddball thing. And then you notice that on this phone, it's a lot less pronounced. But both phones, you better have a case because if you lay the camera down again, I said it before, I'll say it again. Don't even try to operate these without a case because if you lay them down, you'll damage the cameras on them. So let's just kind of do a quick overview of the, uh, how the apps function, what, how the menus look, and maybe just take a few apps and see how fast they open uh, and comparing the two phones together. Be back in a moment here. Hello guys, getting back to the review here. I'm gonna take those off the previous screens. Is I forgot that I did not go over the placement of where all the controls are. So on the right side, you're gonna notice on this guy, the volume controls and the volume rocker. So on the Note 20 Ultra, it is back where it belongs. On the Note 10 Plus, the controls are over here on the left side, uh, which took a lot of getting used to for me and still does even after 10 months. The S Pen is where it belongs on the Note 10 on the bottom. The S Pen is on the left side on the Note 20. So that is a departure from the normal, no big deal. So let's uh, take a look at the actual menus on these guys. One is running, by the way, Android 11. The Note 20 Ultra on the left is running Android 11. The Note 10 on the right is running Android 10. So if you just move around in the menus, you're not going to notice a big difference. I mean, it has the same capabilities. I did not go through every one of them. I'm sure Note uh, 20 Ultra with Android 11 has plenty of new tweaks and a lot of hidden features and whatnot. But uh, the biggest thing to note is the difference between the displays, which is the major selling point to this guy over here, the Note 20 Ultra. If you go to display, you're gonna see a really cool new setting. And that, that one that says motion smoothness down there toward the middle. If you click on mo motion smoothness, you have a setting for adaptive and standard. Adaptive will switch the phone automatically as needed based on what's going on with between uh, 120 Hertz and 60. Standard would lock the phone on 60. If you wanna save your battery, lock it on 60. As far as my opinion on how uh, much better the uh, 120 works, well, I haven't had a lot of exposure to some of the features that might exemplify that, which, which would be full HD 4K movies, I guess there'd be a difference. Also, uh, if you're playing intense games, uh, especially some of the newer ones, which I do not, the 120 probably would look a hell of a lot better. Uh, but just standard day-to-day -day use. 
I would say standard is fine. And that is all this one is capable of on the Note 10 over here. Uh, both are amazing phones. Uh, you can customize the display. They both have the blue light filter. You want to put these on, uh, you see where it says screen mode? Put it on Vivid for the most bright, beautiful display. It really makes the Super AMOLED Plus pop out. You can change the screen revolution, resolution. I put it on full HD. Uh, but everything else is pretty much almost identical. So let's get back to the main menu here. And we're going to kind of do a little short speed test on some of the common apps. I'm going to close out all the previous uh, apps I opened in the tray. Let's just see how quick Netflix opens. Uh, so let's try to be fair here, get my hand positioned over them. One, two, three. As you can see, it looks like the Note 20 Ultra on the left opened up slightly faster. Uh, this one was still stuck on the, the menu. Uh, I'm going to try to do a video test here. So let's just find a program that is preloaded. Okay, we're going to have to cut that off because I want this to be fair. Okay. So there's a preview for that movie called uh, Loop in there. I'm going to try to click on these exactly at the same time and see which one loads the video first. One, two, three. Looks like the Note 10 on the right had a slight advantage there. So I'm thinking that the processor doesn't really care whether or not or what kind of video you're playing when it comes to Netflix. Okay, so let's close out these guys here. So we have uh, empty memory. We're going to go ahead and try another app here real quick. I'm not going to do this too long. Uh, let's do Google TV. One, two, three. Load it up quicker on the, the Note 10 on the right. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and go back. Uh, let's see how quick it opens up the camera. One, two, three. Almost a draw, guys. I just saw a little slight difference, a little faster on that uh, Note 20, if I'm correct. Oh, look, a kitty. But uh, pretty close. Let's just try one more. Let's cl close out the recent apps. Uh, let's try YouTube. Okay, one, two, three, YouTube. Looks like the Note 10, again, loaded first. Uh, kind of interesting, the Note 20 Ultra is a lot faster. So when it comes to just the basic UI, moving around, opening menus or whatever, it's pretty much a draw. The 120 hertz refresh rate on the Note 20 Ultra over here. I mean, it's absolutely amazing if you are exposed to a lot of apps that require that kind of refresh rate. So uh, I'm going to close this out and we'll get to the next part of the review. So guys, something I want to look at here is to see if this new laser autofocus is as good as they say it is. This is the Note 20 Ultra 5G. You notice how I'm focused in on this uh, coffee flavor here. And if you look back there at that piece of furniture up there at the top, it looks blurred out. Then if you move the camera up, look how quick it's focusing on that. Not other items, probably about 10, 12 feet away. So look how quick it focuses back on this item, which is very close. And then instantly it seems to clear itself up when you go back and forth between the two items. Again, this is the Note 20 Ultra. So I'd say that the laser autofocus is a winner. So these are some picture examples, starting with the Note 20 Ultra 5G. This is a beautiful early morning picture. You could tell the colors are just perfect, blending perfectly. No distortion. Uh, this is the grand opening at Jollibee of all places. Good mix of uh, shade, dark, light. Just absolutely perfect. Uh, here's a really great day at the Juan Seguin Memorial here in Seguin. Uh, very low uh, sunlight, uh, gray day, but the colors are just popping out. Uh, it just you, you can't complain about the camera on this phone. We're going to be getting into some low light examples here in a second. 
This is after Christmas time, taking some closing shots at Christmas again. Absolutely perfect in a low light situation. You don't see any distortion, no noise of any sort. So the phone excels in the low light situation with the Note 20 Ultra. This is for the Note 10 Plus 5G, some older pictures. The next picture coming up here was taken at the Hill Country State Natural Area. Look at that, just stunningly beautiful, clear. The camera uh, doesn't seem to have any differences when you're doing the daytime shot. This is some sunset sh shots back in the fall time. Absolutely beautiful. Low light, the way it just makes those colors pop. This is the same day as the other ones at the Juan Segui Memorial. Gray, dreary day, but still, no, everything's just popping. The colors are just perfectly balanced. The... Uh, I can't even uh, find one flaw in these pictures. And this is the Note 10. Uh, this is at the end of the Juan Seguin set. Here's some low light examples taken just before Christmas. And uh, not too bad at all. It's a little less clear, in my opinion, than uh, the Note 20. But still, I mean, you can even see the blue dusk light in the background of the house. So not very far behind, but the Note 20 does seem to excel. So guys, I just tested the laser autofocus, which is gonna be a little separate video I'll insert here. The Note 20 Ultra on the left definitely has an advantage on the laser autofocus because that's the feature it has. The Note 10 on the right does not have that feature, but uh, as far as the camera, which I will show a few example pictures, there's some amazing pictures I was able to take on the Note 10 on the right there because I've had the thing for a long time, sunsets or whatever. I've not had a chance to take a full range of pictures on the Note 20 Ultra on the left, but I do have some example pictures and we'll kind of go through those. So, you know, we covered some basic areas here. We covered the uh, overall build quality, the, the Android versions, uh, how you move around the menus, uh, the adaptive brightness uh, or adaptive 120 Hertz feature versus 60 and we we touched base a little bit on the cameras so um, I think both phones are an incredible value uh, I've had them the note for about two two and a half weeks and so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my point of view here on the camera and kind of give my uh, final decision on that So guys, uh, these are both really incredible phones, okay? This phone came out uh, August of 2019. This one came out only in August of 2020. Samsung pretty much agrees to do three years of upgrades on phones. So this one's about halfway through its life. This one's got a lot of life left in it. If you're, uh, when I say upgrades, I mean by updates to software. And uh, which means security patches, whatever you need, next Android version. So this is about halfway through its life. This has got its full life when it comes to that. Um, I'm going to say that it depends on who you are and what you're going to use it for. This one definitely wins when it comes to the camera. Much better low light uh, experience. Uh, little faster, as you saw when I compared it to, not a whole lot. Again, I didn't push it to the limits. I didn't play any high intensity games on here. I saw, I noticed, uh, you know, during the review, it was acting a little different than normal use. This is a little snappier when opening up apps, but not enough. So performance wise, if you're an average user, they're both a draw. If you're going to play games and do intensive things, we know this is going to win. That's just logic. This one here is running uh, Snapdragon 865. This one's running 855. This is last year's processor. This is this year's processor. So this is going to win. They both have 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, they, this one has a slightly lower pixel density. But the displays, in my opinion, without going into nitty-gritty details, they're identically, they're beautiful. When they're playing movies, viewing pictures, whatever you're going to do, they're both the same. So they, they have their advantages and disadvantages. If you're not a camera buff and you're not going to be running around taking low light shots, I'd say stick with this phone at least another year. You got another year of upgrades on it. 
it just if you're gonna use it just for what it is and you you've enjoyed it for the time you had it I say don't upgrade if you're not really caring about running around taking night shots and if you are an avid camera user then this would be the choice because it has an incredible 100 mega pixel zoom it has incredible night vision I'll show some examples uh, taking pictures of Christmas lights or whatever and with the size of these lenses if you are shopping just for the camera then upgrade if this don't now I'm not saying this is a slouch this has an amazing camera and the pictures will show that but when it comes to the zoom and low light this cannot compare to the note 20 ultra so I have a mixed opinion upgrade if you're doing it just for the camera and if that 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate is a big deal I would say another thing to look at too is um, future proofing three years of upgrades newer phone and I, I keep using the word upgrades I mean updates from Samsung a, a year and a half this is a little bit more future proof with the higher refresh rate but if you're going to use it just for day-to-day -day use it's amazing the camera's still amazing the apps run amazing so mixed review guys it's up to what you're going to upgrade for and what your reason is i've explained the reason my reason for upgrading and that is it's future proof i'm a camera buff and this one has a much better camera than this one so mixed mixed opinion so thanks a lot for watching guys uh this thing has to be turned in uh probably next week I'll be getting warnings from T-Mobile to send it back so I'm gonna stick with the Note 20 Ultra again thanks for watching guys uh, remember to subscribe to our channel also remember to click the like button and the reminder bell to be reminded when we are sending or uploading new videos thanks a lot guys